this is where I work. It's a pretty good place to work. Um, this is where I do my radio show. It's Denmark Radio in Denmark. And um, this is one of the French benefits. They don't pay me too much to do the show. And this is just here. And you look down the hallway, you can see they got stacks and stacks. You can always have a listen to it. Basically what you pretty much do, because most records, I mean, you don't know if there's a break on one or not. You just go grab a whole section and bring them all home, check them out and come home, just take it section by section. But I like this instead, this is funny. Just like, see if you can get lucky. Most of the time you do too. That's the fun part. Ooh. So like, got the computers, all crappy computers, and now they got the new system. Funky drummer. We got live people mixing it live, the sampled versions of it. Uh, Revenge of the Funky Drummer, and then obviously they got Sober, the number one. <laughs> I have to pay a fucking dime. And uh, some other people have been blessed the same way. I think it was Shadow that had like a basement somewhere. Um, that you could just go down and sit down and get records. I stay here, just regular sound. The sound that everybody got, <laughs> that everybody uses. And then I just program beats. And then you just you program a beat. I'm not saying that would be the beat, but you program a beat and then you just start scratching on it. DJing for the last mm, probably like 10, 12 years. And I've uh, been fortunate enough to win a lot of Danish DMC championships, a lot of battles, uh, which led me to New York in 1994 where I won the Animus Music Seminar Battle for World Supremacy. And in 1996, I won the coveted DMC title, uh, the Disco Mix Club World Championship. And the two previous years, I was actually a runner-up in third place, so it's like three, two, one. On the basis of that title, it got me a big name, DMC title in 96. Um, toured with a lot of people. I do club nights, you know, I, I, I do judge DJ competitions, and I open for, uh, for, for larger acts than myself, and I make a living of it. <laughs> Alright, who's my name? 
and it means remember my name in, in Danish. Uh, it's like no bullshit, uh, no bullshit name. I just wrote remember my name and that has become my name. I put those ones up. There's a couple there, one there and one one there. And the first thing I did when I started doing posters was a, like a teaser campaign uh, because I was quite uh, inspired by the teaser campaigns of their commercial industry uh, where you don't know what the campaign is all about until the last minute where <clears throat> it's all revealed. But I thought that it was much more exciting when you didn't know what the campaign was all about. So I did a campaign for growing beard, uh, growing a beard because it's a product which you can't buy. Um, and uh, what I, basically what I did was just to do a lot of drawings of uh, animals and, and women and men with beards on them, with, with beards. I did that for about a year. And then I got fed up with it and I started doing the Remember My Name campaign. Um, because people were, were tearing down my posters really quickly and I got a bit annoyed by, by it. So I just uh, started writing messages on my posters like uh, Gone Tomorrow and Remember My Name and stuff like that. And I've also done a campaign called the Winter Dick. Because in the, in the winter in Copenhagen, it's really cold, so I did this um, this small dick, which you get when it's really cold, and I, I did a lot of posters of them and uh, put them up everywhere. Uh, so each winter I do that, and uh, a lot of people see see those dicks. It was kind of like meant to be a a male bonding thing, where all the men could walk around and and they would know what it was would be all about because uh, everybody would have the same problem but uh, a lot of women also <laughs> a response response to the to the campaign so they must know something about it as well uh, i'm not quite sure why it's time for action go on that's all Jeg er lige ude at filme. Må jeg godt sætte en plakat op her hos dig? Må jeg det? Det var sgu da fint nok. Der er nogle similarities between this and traditional graffiti, and there's also a lot of differences. Traditional graffiti, people are just really fed up with it at the moment in Copenhagen. When they see these posters, they are like reacting completely different. They think that it, they think that it's really exciting and think that oh this is a new media and what's going on here, and um, they know that it's paper and it's not paint, so they don't think that it's vandalism. They th they think it's quite harmless. What ha also has happened is that the Danish press has been quite and the Danish media has been quite positive about about it all. They've they've made a lot of interviews with street artists and and also myself and it's been quite weird because at the same time they they're you making this anti graffiti campaign in the media and and along alongside that they they're writing a lot of positive stories about what I'm doing and what other street artists are doing so it's it's I don't I don't really know what's going on it's quite it's quite strange Precis. <laughs>